looking into the evolution of olfaction in mammals. I'm looking at olfactory anatomy, specifically skull morphology, and even more specifically, this feature right here. It's a little cryptic, bony feature right here called the cribriform plate. And this is a grizzly, there. The cool thing about the cribriform plate, it's a very close imprint of all the olfactory neurons that originate here in the snout or in our nose and cross over into the brain. You see these holes? That's where the olfactory nerves come through. So it really is an imprint of the soft tissue. Why is that interesting to you? Well, I mean, if you look at the humans, the human cribriform plate compared to the grizzly, this is a human with its dome taken off. It's really tiny. There are very few holes. It's a very small imprint. There's huge variation, and that's what I'm really interested in, is the variation. Because you would expect, if an animal has a lot of neurons dedicated to picking up odor signals, it's going to have a bigger imprint with more olfactory nerves going through the bone. And an animal that, like us, who doesn't dedicate as many neurons to that and doesn't rely on olfaction as much as another animal, like the grizzly or the dog, is going to have a smaller imprint. And that's what I get to do, is compare this and get a general position, I mean, picture of which animal relies more or less on olfaction for survival. Because they really, they use olfaction for foraging for food, predator defense or detecting predators, choosing mates, recognizing kin. We all do, but just to different levels. Yeah. So why is the collection important? It's really important because my study would be completely impossible without it. And there's this new combination of using skulls from uh, collections like this and applying CT scanning and 3D imagery so that you can go inside a skull get to this cryptic little feature without doing this, which is to break the bone, which no museum collection is going to want. So now that we have these new techniques, we can go in, make virtual models of what we're looking at specifically, and all of these collections are available to us. And it's, it's like we're just beginning to tap into it. It's just the beginning. So it's very, very cool. My name is Deborah Bird, and I'm at UCLA. I'm in the, a graduate student in the Department of Ecology and Evolutionary Biology.